Jesus taught using simple stories called parables with profound truths about God's kingdom that could be understood by those who were spiritually prepared. The word parable comes from the Greek word parabolo. It means to set beside or to compare. Parables veil a story's meaning, and each listener from an innocent child to a wise older person hears and understands truths in them in proportion to their faith and intelligence. Luke said that Jesus spoke all these things to the multitude in parables, and without a parable he spake not unto them. This fulfilled the prophecy, I will open my mouth in parables, and utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. In Matthew chapter 13, Jesus went out of a house and sat by the sea. Because of the multitude who gathered to listen to him, he went into a ship while they stood on the shore and preached many parables to them. One was about how the kingdom of heaven was likened unto a man who sowed good seed in his field. While his men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat, then went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, tares also appeared with them. A tear is a poisonous darnel weed that commonly grows in fields of grain and looks just like weed until it sprouts its fruit when it is ready to harvest. Then they can be easily told apart. The householder servant said, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? And from whence then hath it tares? The householder said that his enemy had done this. They asked if they should gather the tares, and he said no, since they might also root up the wheat with them, because they could not tell the difference between them. He said to let the tares and the wheat grow together until the harvest. Then they would easily be able to tell the difference between them. He would then tell the reapers, Gather together first the tares, and bind them in bundles, to burn them, and then gather the wheat into my barn. After the multitude left, Jesus' disciples asked him to declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Jesus taught that he that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man. The field represents the world, the good seed is the children of the kingdom, and the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed the tares is the devil, the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Jesus said that as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity. These would be cast into a furnace of fire, where there would be wailing and gnashing of teeth. The righteous who must grow among the wicked until the end of the world would then shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Jesus then said, Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Jesus told a short parable about how the kingdom of heaven was like a grain of mustard seed that a man sowed or planted in his field, even though it was the least or smallest of all seeds, measuring only one to two millimeters in diameter, it grew to become the greatest of herbs, and a tree that birds lodged in its branches as high as 20 feet tall. This comparison described the growth of the Savior's church in the last days before his second coming. Jesus told another parable about how the kingdom of heaven was like leaven or yeast that a woman took and mixed in three measures of meal or flour until it was leavened. This parable also told how the kingdom of God would start small, with Jesus' twelve apostles and his other disciples, but would grow and spread throughout the world. It taught that just as yeast changes whenever it comes into contact with and makes dough rise from within, when God first changes our heart, we reflect his glory and are transformed into his likeness. Then we do our part to further his work and bless the lives of others. Jesus told a parable about how the kingdom of heaven was like a treasure hid in a field. When a man found it, in his joy he went and sold all that he had and bought that field. This shows how important it is to discover the gospel of Jesus Christ, turn our lives over to him, and then trade our worldly ways and follow him with all our heart. In another parable about the value of the kingdom of heaven, Jesus said it was like a merchant man who sought goodly pearls, which are rare precious stones grown in oyster shells valued by their size. When the man found one pearl of great price, he sold all that he had and bought it. 
This parable taught that the gospel is of more value than all other things, and it is our duty to sacrifice all we possess in order to obtain it. Jesus told in another parable that the kingdom of heaven was like a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. This referred to a circular dragnet attached behind a boat with floats on top and weights on the bottom. It passed through the water, catching everything in its way, with a cord that would close and trap the fish. When it was full, they drew to shore and gathered the good fish in vessels and cast the bad away. Jesus said, So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. They would be cast into the furnace of fire, where there would be wailing and gnashing of teeth. This parable taught that while many profess to belong to the kingdom of God, their hearts may not truly belong there, and the mix of good and bad fish represent the wicked and the just. Jesus asked if his disciples understood all these things, and they said, Yea, Lord. He said that every scribe who was instructed unto the kingdom of heaven was like a householder that brought forth out of his treasure new and old things. His disciples asked why he spoke unto them in parables, and Jesus told them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. In Luke chapter 13, Jesus told a parable about a man who had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. He went there to look for fruit, but did not find any. He told the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? It is interesting to note that John the Baptist and Jesus Christ both preached repentance throughout Israel for three years. The dresser said, Lord, let it alone this year, also till I shall dig about it and dung it. If it bear fruit, well, and if not, then thou shalt cut it down. The vineyard owner represents God, who expects to see fruit on his tree. The vineyard keeper is the Savior, who pled for a little more time to mercifully care for his trees so we could bear fruit. This parable was directed to the Jews who should have brought forth good fruit, and teaches us that we will perish if we do not repent. Jesus taught in a synagogue on the Sabbath, and called for a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for eighteen years. He said, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity, laid his hands on her, and she was immediately made straight and glorified God. The synagogue ruler said indignantly, There are six days in which men ought to work in them. Therefore come and be healed, and not on the Sabbath day. The Lord answered, Thou hypocrite, doth not each one of you on the Sabbath loose his ox or his ass from the stall, and lead him away to watering? Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan hath bound these eighteen years, be loosed from this bond on the Sabbath day? Jesus' adversaries were ashamed, and the people rejoiced for all the glorious things he had done. He went through cities and villages, teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem. Someone asked, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he told them, Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many will seek to enter in, and shall not be able. He said that when the master of the house rose up and shut the door, we would stand outside, knock at the door, and say, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he would answer, I know you not. We would say that we had eaten and drank in his presence, and he had taught in our streets. But he would say, I know you not. Depart from me, all ye workers of iniquity. There would then be weeping and gnashing of teeth when we saw Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, but we were thrust out. Certain Pharisees came that day and told Jesus to leave, or Herod would kill him. But Jesus said, Go tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. I must walk today, tomorrow, and the day following. For it cannot be that a prophet perish out of Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, which killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered thy children together, as a hen doth gather her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate, and verily I say unto you, ye shall not see me until the time come, when ye shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. 
Jesus' parables teach us of the growth and destiny of his church in the latter days and are a call for us to come unto him. He promised to bless us to understand his gospel and said, Blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. And this is Matthew chapter 13 and Luke chapters 8 and 13 in the New Testament. Look for hidden images located in the video. You can support PonderFund by visiting our Etsy site, PonderFund.com website, and our Facebook page to find more fun things to do. Please like and share these videos with anyone you think might enjoy them. Also, please subscribe to this PonderFund YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching and find some time this week to ponder.